Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you for the privilege to gather like this today. We thank you, Father, because it is not by power or by might, but by your spirit. We thank you because every single person who's here today has been brought here by you and for this particular moment. And so we ask, Lord, that this moment be maximized even for them in the name of Jesus, that that which you have on your heart for them to hear and take away from the meeting today, that they receive it and they hear it deeply in their spirit. And more than anything, that it begins a work of true transformation within them in Jesus' name. I ask that the words that I speak today, you cause them to be spirit and life unto everyone who hears us and i ask lord that you do a new thing you do a new thing you do a new thing for us in the name of jesus thank you father i yield my vessel over to you i ask lord that you take control of the words that come from me let it be even just as if you were speaking them to your people in jesus name amen amen okay so we're going to get into the uh message today we already know the title the seal of the spirit the first uh scripture that i want us to look at and that's going to be the anchor scripture for the message today so we're just going to take a look at that and um and then we'll just keep it somewhere you know like how i normally do it where it's like you know we just take that uh message and then we keep it like in a back pocket for a little bit and then we get back to it so ephesians 4 and 30 that is the anchor scripture for today um victoria if you can have that thank you so much so Ephesians 4 and verse 30, I'm reading from King James Version, and it says here, it says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Um, I think that's a very simple and very clear verse of scripture. Um, but there was a day I was studying, and I happened to read that verse in another translation, and it literally opened it up to me in a very different dimension, in a very different way. And so I want to share, you know, just the things that the Holy Spirit began to communicate to me as I came into this other, uh, would I say, expression of that verse of the Bible, right? And so it's, it's, it, it was something that, that just began to build and build and build in my spirit until, you know, I was like, you know what, um, let's, let's get into it and let's all partake of this, right? So when we talk about, you know, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, you know, sealing us onto redemption, you know, it's quite clear what it is, right? It says for the day of redemption. And for those of us who may be confused, you know, this is obviously not talking about your uh, redemption or would I say your salvation experience here on earth? Because I know, you know, as far as the context of the earth is concerned, when we talk about you know redemption we're talking about it here we're talking about its context here so we literally have you know people you know songs things like that you know i'm redeemed you know so as far as your redemption here on earth is concerned you know that's a given there's no argument about that and so but so the question is you know why then is um the bible telling us this you know paul saying this in um the book of ephesians and says um grieve not the holy spirit of god uh whereby ye are sealed for the day of redemption so it's like well are we not redeemed it did it not happen the day that i chose to give my life to christ right am i not redeemed what do you mean by unto the day of redemption and that's where i want to just spend uh some more time just um opening that up right so in order to consider that as accurately as possible let us take a step back let's even just examine um, what this salvation or redemption experience is, right? Because anybody who's here, and I would hope that that is the case, um, the day that that's not the case, you know, I would like to know that so we can do the needful, but I would hope that everybody who's present here is indeed redeemed, is indeed saved, you know, is born again. This is literally, a, you know, fellowship and ministry. And so this is a voluntary participation. It's not like church where it's like you had to go there because your parents took you there. So my you know, expectation is that if you're here, you're already saved. And so we want to just look at what that salvation experience is like, right? Holistically, all around, what does, what does that look like? And so to dig into that properly, let's take yet another step back and consider man right because in this situation it is man that is being saved and so we need to look at what man is so that we understand what redemption or salvation looks like for man so man as many of us are aware is a you know is is made up of three components if you will like man has three sides to him 
there's the spirit there's the soul and there's the body i think this is one of the very basic things that you learn you know in your early days of coming into uh you know into christ right so you learn that man is spirit soul and body so there's that um that's a three-dimensional aspect that three-dimensional element of man that is extremely important when you begin to consider what salvation looks like for man so man is spirit soul and body and there is no way you have a man if any one of those components isn't present right there is no way you have a man if any of those components isn't present so you have you know uh these animals that have like a body and a soul but they don't have a spirit right and then you have spirit beings who have a spirit but they don't have a body the thing that makes man man and thing that makes man uniquely man and the only creature who can be man is the simple fact that man possesses those three elements those three components and so that's why you would see in the bible you know the um psalmist is saying you know like what is man that you are so mindful of him because you have to wonder like why is man this you know like what did you weave into man you know how did you how did you come up with this idea of what a man should be but we are the only creatures who get to have that three dimensional you know existence here on earth okay um with the spirit soul and body component so we already you know know that we share that quite often you know when a man has to or rather a spirit needs to find expression here on earth they have to find the body they have to find the body so that's why you find situations where um you know people would talk about like i don't know back in nigeria where they'd be like oh this animal is a witch like most times it's a cat right so it's like oh <laughs> that's actually so and so anti you know because ultimately if a spirit is going to find expression here on earth they would need a body that is not an ideal body right so it would be best that they have a human body that they can occupy right so it's a unique privilege that man has and one that uh makes us have to look at things that pertain to us a little differently so then when we talk about the salvation experience it then makes sense that salvation also happens for man on three layers on three levels right so that's why you hear uh teachings and you hear explanations along the lines of well man uh is saved man is being saved and man will be saved and that can confuse you because you're like first of all first of all i came out in church so what is am i saved or am i not saved right so it's that idea that man you know is saved man is being saved and he will be saved that's when we begin to really understand what's been expressed here in Ephesians 4 and 30 right so that salvation experience happening on three layers can be broken down into each of them now your spirit the day you accept Christ the day you give your your life to Christ it's done your spirit is saved it can be more saved than that it's just done so when people say you know man is saved that's that your spirit is saved because you know at the end of the day um the spirit of man is like the core aspect of man it's like the core component of a man right so man is saved when you come out and you make that prayer the sinner's prayer and you hand your life over to Jesus as your lord and savior you are saved from that moment on your spirit level however your soul is not saved directly on that day that is the reason why they say man is being saved because your soul then has to go through its own version of salvation so salvation looks different for um you know each layer of you so the spirit component gets saved and it you know it's done but the soul level this the 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 aspect of the soul level being saved it's a continuous process and it can take as long as it takes for some people um or it can be a quick enough process for some other people right it really depends on you know just kind of how your uh walk with god is right so the soul level that's where a lot of work happens so i i know i've shared it before that the reason why many of us do not experience or live out the uh would i say the 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 densest uh would i say version of our salvation experience here on earth is because many times we got saved in our spirit and then we we neglected our souls so many of us expected that simply because we came out to give our lives to Christ everything about our soul is just rewritten everything is fresh and that, that that's not the case right you lived that life for a number of years there are things that have been 
program that have been poured into your soul and so that soul needs its own saving and that's what the bible refers to as the transformation okay so that's why the bible says that be renewed or rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind right so that's the soul layer of saving because that is where you have to begin to work and begin to throw the things of god at it consistently and constantly exposing that soul to the truth of god's word right the bible puts it in another translation that says that it's the holy spirit that helps us by yielding to his standards by yielding to his government he begins to transpire that salvation element that salvation experience within the soul or rather the spirit he begins to transpire into the soul but that only happens because we allow that to happen so now you've given your life to christ and you are a believer but your soul still needs help and that help happens because you begin to yield your soul so that the holy spirit can begin to funnel these realities that exist in your spirit into your soul so you find that over time the things that you did before you no longer like to do them why because that transmission that transfer has started to happen the realities in your spirit have begun to permeate the barrier of your soul and your spirit beginning to change the component the composition rather and the makeup of your soul so whereas before your soul was 100 percent driven by your flesh driven by lust driven by the world, driven by, you know, just suggestions of the enemy. Now there's another influence that's coming into that soul. And that's the influence from your spirit because of the salvation experience. But again, I say it only happens because you allow it. So some of us might take that sinner's prayer and walk away from that place and go right back to the things that we used to do. Your salvation experience gets pegged there. It never changes the outcome of your life. And like Shadi was saying, the reason why many of us then keep struggling in life, even when we know what we need to do, is because our souls are yet to be restored. Our souls need to be restored. Our souls need to prosper. Your soul cannot prosper in the natural state that it had as long as it was driven by sin and the flesh. That is the reason why this salvation experience now needs to happen in your soul. So that your soul begins to shed the old man, begins to shed the excess weight and become open to receiving the realities from your spirit. That is when your soul begins to prosper. So I know we read that verse a lot and we say, oh, I wish that you prosper above all things, um, even as your soul prospers. And we're like, oh yeah, you know, we're supposed to prosper and make money. And that's what the verse is saying. But you have to understand that this is different because it's saying that even you prospering as a whole, Basically, what your life looks like is dependent on your soul prospering. But your soul prospers because the influence of the spirit has been given that chance to permeate your soul. Not because you finally made some money and then it makes you feel at peace. So now you're prospering all around. That's not what it is. Okay? It says, I wish that you'd be in good health and you prosper even as your soul prosper. It happens because your soul has been exposed to the economy of the spirit that is able to transform it, restore it, and make it new. So then you begin to shut up the old man, the simple nature, the lustful nature, the lost nature, the confused nature begins to fall off. Why? Because there's another influence that's coming from your spirit that's now driving the economy of your soul. So you begin to function from that reality. You begin to function from that level. That is what it means when people say we are being saved. It's the soul. And that all happens here. And as long as we remain here on earth, that work is going to continue to happen. Because from time to time, you will step out, you will get exposed to things. And it's like a cleansing system, like Shade said, must continue to happen. So maybe you step out, you get exposed to things, you find yourself in environments where you didn't belong or you were not supposed to be. But guess what? There is a mechanism that needs to happen um, and bring your soul back into alignment, bring it into restoration, cleanse it. That thing that you just got exposed to, you know, by mistake, that thing that you stumbled upon, you know, when you were just, I don't know, scrolling or whatever, right? Those things would then get cleansed from your soul. It's a continuous process. The idea is that we want to maintain a healthy version of our soul to ensure that the densest version of what God makes available to us um, in Christ becomes available to us here on earth. So then the last layer is when it says we will be saved. What does it mean? That is talking about the final uh, salvation of the body. 
the truth is that as far as we are human as long as we are human rather and we remain in this human body there are things that are attached to it that we we all we most most likely cannot escape for most people not even most likely we cannot escape for example this body must age this body must age and it must die at some point even if it it takes 150 years for that to happen it will happen okay that is the idea of our final salvation in that it, it we just cannot have that reality here on earth this body it will it will it will it will give out at some point and it'll be done so there's a part of the bible and i need to find that verse i sh- i was supposed to have it with me but that's why it's talking about um when when uh paul was uh talking about like you know groaning in this our our mortal body and wanting to loan his uh his heavenly body wanting to be clothed yes i'm gonna see if i can um I'm going to see if I can find that verse. But he was uh mentioning that you know he 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 longed to be yes, thank you. He said for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands, okay? It says meanwhile we groan longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling because when we are clothed we will not be found naked you have to understand that he's not talking about a house it's not a house that saves you from nakedness i hope you are following that right so he's talking about that that version of us that is only available after we live here he's talking about the heavenly dwelling that's the body that we occupy when we leave this place that version of us that is not subject to cold and heat and sickness and you know all kinds of things a virus here you know this child coming from school and popping and then now you you know you do you have a you know so he's talking about that version of our body that version of our heavenly dwelling that version that is not limited that can do a lot of things that is not bound by the laws of nature that's what he was talking about so he says meanwhile we grow longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling because when we are clothed we will not be found naked and you know why because when i don't know if we need to go down this route but when adam lost his place you understand that the bible says that they became naked it wasn't that they lost their clothing the bible is um the the the, the bible is talking about their heavenly heavenly body if you will they lost that that's why it says they are naked So now you are restricted to this human limited version of yourself as long as you remain on earth. That is what the Bible refers to when it says in Ephesians 4:30 that we are sealed for the day of redemption. That's the final day. That's when it's done. When we when we leave this earth, that's when the redemption experience is complete. If you are following me please I'd like to just get that response or feedback or or something. I want to know that we're following I I I wanted to go down this route because the thing that we're going to be considering I think it's very important that we get this part down. If not that aspect does not really doesn't it just like you whatever. But once we get into that aspect I think having this understanding of man's actual nature, man's destiny, man's form helps you understand that better. So the three layers of man must eventually be saved. The spirit has gotten saved the soul is being saved and the body will be saved eventually that's the last one to be saved and that only happens when we exit here and so that's why Paul is saying there that we are sealed by the holy spirit for the day of redemption that is the final redemption beyond the ones the one that we've experienced here on earth even as our soul has been is getting redeemed and you know our spirit has been redeemed that is the final redemption but the only reason that we can even experience any of that any of those redemptive qualities whether on earth whether in the heaven is simply because we have access to that salvation through Christ we have it through Christ simply because he obtained it on our behalf so it's not by means of what anybody did it's not as a result or an, or an effect of what anybody did so when you look in the bible um so 
it'll take a longer time to really explain the mechanics and all of that of uh, salvation but understand this that salvation was procured on the basis of someone else carrying another person in him so at the moment that jesus you know was dying he was essentially carrying every single one of us i mean nobody has come here and has had to die for their own sins right but then when we give our life to christ we're like oh we receive our salvation you know through the uh, the sacrifice of jesus it's because when jesus did that he was carrying every one of us within him so there are a lot of scriptures that i can share with us and i would actually just reel some of them out so that we study them um, on our own it says here in second timothy 2 and 11 it says here's a trustworthy saying if we died with him we will also live with him okay it's shedding light on this concept that the reality of what we have as people who are partakers of salvation only happens because of an address that we now have which is being in christ because of this new location that we have which is being in christ that's essentially what this scripture is trying to explain to us so you look at acts chapter 17 and 28 and it's saying pretty much the same thing king james version it says here it says for in him we live and move and have our being i let me tell you when i tell you i love this scripture i love the scripture it's communicating a reality that you must never forget and it's been repeated over and over and over and one of the things that you realize the more you spend time studying the bible is that the bible does not use words carelessly it does not use words loosely our understanding of those words might be you know uh i don't know lacking but the bible does not use words carelessly so it repeats it over and over multiple times letting us know that this reality of salvation that we're claiming to have it is simply because we have a location that location being christ so it says that in acts chapter 17 in him we live in him we move and have our being that is you live here now this is your house now this is your life now this is this is it for you right let's take a look at another uh scripture just to make this point uh further because i think if we get the message today something huge will shift in our lives something huge will shift in our lives and you will see that even your soul will experience deep levels of restoration deep levels of repair that will change the way that your life actually looks today so it says here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 3, it says, For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Are you understanding that the Bible is not, it's not, it's not just trying to be poetic and like let's just keep using words? No. It's trying to communicate a deep reality that it's like you have to understand this. You have to get this. So you need to understand that this is the reality of anyone who has accepted Christ and who has accepted the salvation experience. Your life is now hidden, God. That's in, uh, I think that's in, is that in Ephesians? No, uh, I think it's in Ephesians actually. Yeah, it's still in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter two, and um, let's see what verse it is. That's, that's where it says, you know, our lives are now hidden, God. I wanna see the exact verse so that I can share with us. I believe it's in Ephesians chapter two. But while the verse is coming up, right? That's the communication in there. So you see scriptures like, oh, our lives are hid in Christ. And we confess these things and we just say it. And like I said, many of us, we have just been repeating scriptures and we didn't even think about like, okay, what does this really mean? What does this represent for me? Oh, Ephesians 2 says something different and I'll share that as well because it's all making the same message. It's all communicating the same thing. So Ephesians 2 and... Um, that's verse six it says for um it says and hath raised us right it's talking about this whole process of dying in christ i would have to read it from verse one to six right for it's connected and makes sense but note it in your notepad if you're taking notes ephesians chapter one sorry ephesians chapter two from verse one to six so it talks about a lot of things and it talks about this reality of us having that salvation through christ and it says and um hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus so my point is is that 
this salvation experience that we have on earth is completely dependent on one thing not just you speaking with your mouth and saying oh i receive jesus as my lord and savior because we know many times people have walked up there confess that they received Christ as their Lord and Savior and then walked away and lived a very different kind of life. But the Bible is letting us know now that the benefits of salvation are only valid as long as yeah, I already shared uh, Colossians 3.3, 3, Madam Ola. This one was um, Ephesians, um, Ephesians 2 and verse 6. So I already shared um, Ephesians 3.3. 3. So this one is just talking about us, you know, um, you know, being dead with Christ and being risen with him in Ephesians uh, 2 and verse 2 or, or, and verse 6. But anyway, the reality of this salvation that you experience is simply based on this location. It's as simple as that, right? So that's what I want us to take away from, you know, this today if we don't, you know, take much else. So now the question is, why is this important? That's not going to be uh, explained here. Because what happens when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is that because you are now born again, literally born again of the Spirit, God gives you His Holy Spirit to dwell within you. So it's at the point in time where you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior that God gives you His Holy Spirit. So a while ago, we're doing a podcast and we're, you know, the question was kind of around like, oh, so, you know, speaking in tongues, like, you know, when does that happen? Like all of that. Now, the baptism is different, but understand that as long as you have come to Christ and you have given your life to Christ, you have been given the Holy Spirit. You have been given the Holy Spirit to dwell within you. Why? Two things. There are two reasons why this happened. Because one, that is God's in quotes, down payment, if you will that validates that we are now purchased. We are no longer a free agent on the market. We now belong to him. So essentially, the Holy Spirit within us, that um, that communicates that we now belong to someone else. We now belong to another. We have been paid for, the deal is done. Paperwork signed, and that's that. That's the first thing. The second thing is that it is a security measure for us. We may not have seen it that way. It is a security measure for us to ensure that we indeed remain uh, in Christ till the day of the final, the final day of redemption, as the Bible puts it in Ephesians uh, 4 and 30. So when we stand as believers, as Christians, and say, oh, you know, I have this and I have that, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, I'm this and that, not that it is in Christ. <laughs> but many of us have grown in a way where we confess a lot of scriptures but we lack the backing that ensures that those scriptures are valid and can actually produce so that scripture would walk around literally smack in the middle of sin and be said well i'm the i'm the uh i'm the righteousness of god in christ the bible is clear that that righteousness of god is in christ it is in christ it is dependent on you being in christ That's the message that I'm trying to communicate today. So we might be roaming here on earth and, you know, going about our lives. Because at the end of the day, we have a journey that we must complete here on earth. But the idea is that even while you are here on earth, you are already sold. So essentially, there's a big tag on you that says soul. You may not see it, but that's how you look in the spirit. There's like this giant tag on you that just says soul. Why? Simply because of the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. That is the deposit that has been put in you. So when this all happens, God has to then put that mechanism in place to ensure that this status that we now have remains true and valid throughout our walk here on earth. And that is what he refers to as the seal of the Spirit. That is what he refers to as the seal of the Spirit. Why? Because the salvation experience is not yet complete. There is that version that would happen on the final day of redemption. There is that version of transformation that will happen on the final day of redemption. That mechanism of ensuring that we all get to that point is what is referred to here as the seal of the spirit. So now, why are we looking at this? I want to read that um, same verse, Ephesians 4.30, but there's a translation that I really, really um, enjoyed and I just want to... um, share that with us so it's the passion translation i keep saying this 
because I think it will truly enrich your Bible study life as much as possible. Invest in some other translations that are not just King James Version. King James Version is great and all of that, but telling you invest in some other translations it'll truly help you grasp some of the things that are being said so Ephesians 4 30 if you look at the passion translation it says here it says the holy spirit of god has sealed you in jesus christ until you experience your full salvation so never grieve the spirit of god or take for granted his holy influence in your life actually in order to ensure that you make it there you have to make sure that you do not lose this holy spirit um within you it says the holy spirit of god has sealed you in jesus until you experience your full salvation so never grieve the spirit of god or take for granted his holy um, influence in your life now there's a story i want to share with us just before i get on to the uh next part of this message um and then we head to a close so I have a friend who has a store in Nigeria. She sells hair care products and she um, she's a very meticulous person. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. So she's a very meticulous person, very careful, very diligent, right, about her business. And so she pays very close attention to even the seemingly small things, right? So, um, you know, when you run businesses and you do it for a while, there are things you learn. You learn by experiences, sometimes painful experiences. But the reality is that you learn it. One way or another, you learn it. Whether by a painful experience or a simple enough experience, you learn it, right? So she sells hair care products. I'm talking about, like, I don't know, not like weave, but I'm talking about, like, hair conditioners, hair oils, shampoo, things like that, right? She sells them. So she sells them in Nigeria. She She's actually based outside Nigeria, but then she runs that business in Nigeria. Um, she has a physical store and all of that, excellent service and all of that. So many times people who shop from her, um, these are people who actually run their own salons, right? They have their own salons and maybe they're even resellers, right? So many times they will place orders with her. She has a very functional website excellently done so you can literally just go on her website place your order so none of that whole drama of oh um it was the price and they tell you dm for price so none of that drama with her she runs a very you know robust website very seamless flow right so many times people will place their orders on her site because everybody's not going to come to lagos right so they'll place the order on the site and she'll ship as far as anywhere in nigeria she'll ship it she has a standard um shipping i love her so much and i'm talking about her business as well this is the plug for her business but i'm i really like her like there's something she does that touch me like so normally she'll charge a shipping fee of course because i mean you have to pay and so usually if it ends up that the courier service that she hires to deliver your items to you ends up coming in less than what the shipping fee is should actually refund refund the extra like so she's a very excellent person when it comes to her business and how she runs it and i i really respect that about her um even if she's not there she's that diligent to ensure that everything is being run excellently and um as professionally as possible so now back to my story so one day she was posting something on instagram um she was talking about a situation that happened with a customer so remember i said that this lady is very meticulous so like if you place an order or whatever she's going to pack it up she's going to wrap it up as you know nice as possible and send it to you and so this lady one day um because like i said she's shipping liquids right so those of us who are well many of us here are africans or at least you know we have like you know, we're, we're black to an extent, right? So we at least know what it is for a Niger parent or an African parent to wrap things for you. I'm telling you that when she, when they wrap that thing for you, it'll take the grace of God to open it, right? So usually when she ships things out to her customers, she will wrap it with so much cling film. She doesn't even mind that investment. She will wrap it and wrap it and wrap it with so much cling film, then put tape, wrap it with tape, and wrap, 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 then put it in the bubble wrap, put it in the, you know? She goes through so much to ensure that that package gets to, I don't know, maybe it's going to Delta State, maybe it's going to Edo State, wherever. She puts in so much effort to ensure that it gets there without spilling, to ensure that it gets there without damage or breaking or whatever. So this particular day, she shared an experience that she had, she had with a customer. And I'm telling you that I laughed so hard because this customer received her package 
and sent her an email and said, hey, thank you so much. I love doing business with you, but you know, I may have to rethink this because I feel like you people use too much you people pack these things too tight. Like the thing is just too tight. Like you use so much cling film, the thing is so I have to take a like pair of scissors or whatever to cut through the uh, wrappings that you put out. <laughs> and the customer is like, like, why do you have to like use so much to wrap it? Like, why do you have to wrap it so much? Like, just please don't use this much wrap. And that day she decided to share it on Instagram. And it wasn't even the day she received it, but she decided to share it on Instagram because she was like, let me tell you, when you do business, you are going to you are going to learn a lot really fast. So this is her thinking that she's doing a really good thing, right? To help customers and all of that, and just make sure there's no like issues or whatever. And someone literally sent her a message, took the time to send her an email to complain that why did you use so much wrapping? Why did you? <laughs> Mama, you're right. I'm telling you, when an African parent wraps something for you, just just to get that it is wrapped, right? So the person literally sent her a message and said, please, I need you to rethink the way that you wrap that. Why do you wrap so much? Why do you this and that? I have to literally cut it with a pair of scissors to cut through the layers of wrapping you put on it and all of that. And so she shared it because she was, she was laughing hard because she was like, you can't please everybody, right? And you can't please customers, right? Because you would think this customer should be excited. You would think she should be happy that like this business <laughs> put in all of these measures to ensure that my package gets to me safe but alas she was met with a complaint via email this person even say oh, so annoying and decided to ignore the person felt the need to send her an email to let her know that don't do this again don't try this wrapping again with me right so human beings are very interesting i laughed so much because i also sell hair care products and i know that i also go through like I put measures in place to ensure that like my package can sustain the product and it gets there uh, safely because it's even packaged in glass and you know all of that anyway so when this customer gave her that feedback i laughed so hard because it truly was i mean what she was saying was the truth like you can never fully please christians or rather you can never fully please people because you are you, you are a customer and you, you know your business thinks that they are doing the best for you but you can never fully please customers they will still find something to complain about. And that was what um, she shared with me. And it was maybe much, much later, much later that one day I was sitting there and I was just, I don't know, I was having my quiet moment and um, the Holy Spirit started to talk to me about that case. So when he brought it up, I was just like, I was like, yeah, that's true. Can't you imagine how ridiculous um, that was that like, can you imagine uh, you can never please customers and you know, like you're just going to have to do the best you can do or whatever. Um, and then he just kind of, broke it down for me and what he was saying was that would you believe that for many of us christians we are exactly like that customer we are exactly like that customer so we might be here laughing at that customer and you know thinking you know i cannot understand how a person is this extra but the holy spirit basically started to explain it to me that many of us christians we are like that customer almost as though you can never please please us because it would seem that the very seal understand that that's why i've gone down this path to make this thing clear that the idea of salvation is not fully complete here there is a full scope of the salvation that only happens after we exit here and god in his infinite wisdom remember i said this because maybe i need to explain it again we have everything we have by virtue of our salvation experience simply on account of being in Christ. I hope we understand what I'm trying to explain here. In Christ. And the Bible then lets us know that God, as an excellent businessman, decided to seal us in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 4 and 30. Being an excellent businessman, like I've just explained that my friend, you know, is doing. He said, the Holy Spirit has sealed us in Jesus. So that is that. God purchased us. This deal is complete. The order is final. But to ensure that you travel safe and get to the final destination safe, the Bible says that God sealed us with his spirit in Christ. So I see, you guys must be used to me by now, that I, I am a very like, I picture things a lot. So when I when I teach, I use these analogies. That's why I gave this example of my, my friend who is selling conditioner. 
and sealing it multiple times. Because that is the same idea being painted here in Ephesians 4 and 30. That God, understanding our nature, understanding how we can be fragile, prone to spillage, prone to, to breakage, prone to damage, right? Jeopardizing our ability to end up at the point of our full salvation, the way that he purchased us, understood that it was necessary to seal us. So it wasn't enough to place us in Christ. It wasn't enough to say, okay, you are now in Christ and I'm going to place you in Christ. He then added, just like that um, African parents, like that Niger mother, wrapped us multiple times in Christ by his Holy Spirit. I hope we're following me. It, it, and the dot connecting is this thing connecting for you i need to know because when i have these analogies i have these stories at least today we're not i'm not talking tech so at least deborah won't get on my case i'm not talking tech this is simple stuff that any of us can understand simple stuff any of us can understand god in his infinite wisdom has decided that i will seal these people so that they arrive at the point of their full salvation at the point of their final salvation without damage so the very seal so th this is this is what the holy spirit was then you know explained to me that the very seal that is put on you to protect you and ensure that you journey safe you don't fall out of the box you don't fall out of you know whatever package they put you in that you can travel safe and you get there containing everything this same ceiling can also be looked at as the packaging that you are now placed into you have now been placed in this airtight, breakage-proof packaging, sealed in it. And you have been put there for the very reason of being able to arrive, you know, before God. Hold. For the very reason that you can arrive before God without any stories. Because that is the whole idea of this thing. Is that all of us must eventually show up in front of God. All of us must eventually show up before God. We can't even show, stand before God by ourselves. We can only stand before God in Christ. So a lot of us that are standing here making prayers and say, ah, Father Lord, Father God, my dear, the reason that you can do that is because you are making those requests in Christ. I really hope you understand what I'm trying to explain today. It is simply because you are in Christ. So, for us to be able to show up before God, even because, you know, we, we speak about priesthood here a lot. We talk about priesthood, which is essentially mounting your altar of prayer and, you know, having a lifestyle of prayer. The reason you can be showing up before God on this basis of priesthood is simply because you are in Christ. So when God deals with us, he deals with us as though Christ. And that's why it's important that whatever happens, whatever we do, that we remain in Christ. Because there is no way we can stand before God without being utterly consumed. If we were not cased in Christ, we did not procure salvation by ourselves. We did not procure redemption by ourselves. We procured it through Christ and we must remain in Christ till that salvation is complete. You don't get to walk away and be like, I've, you know, I've done, I've, I've figured. No, 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 no. As long as you remain on this earth, you must remain in Christ. That is the basis upon which we can ever show up before God. Is that when Christ, when God sees you, he sees you through the eyes of Christ. None of us have the capacity to ever say, you know, because I've been such a good believer, I have such a strong prayer life, I'm so diligent, I'm so this, I'm so that. None of us have the ability to stand before God without being encased in Christ. So there's a man of God that I listened to and I enjoyed very much. He was talking about his experience when he um, died and had, you know, uh, uh, an experience in heaven. And he was saying how he was so curious. So Jesus was speaking to him when he had this experience. And so when he, you know, was speaking with Jesus, he kept trying to see the father. He kept trying to see God. And he realized that at any point in time, he would try it. He, he, he was being Jesus was always in the way. We're human beings. So he remembered all of that when he woke up and he was sharing his experience. It was like, he kept trying to peep. He kept trying to see. Because it's like, is that not where the father is? Can I not just look there? But any time he tried, he kept getting like barricaded by Jesus. 
this is the idea. Now, because, you know, he wasn't yet, you know, dead, as it were, like, you know, he was going to be sent back to earth anyway. So, and Jesus was telling me, if you, if you want to go and see, you know, you're not, go, you're not going back. There's no way you see the father and go back. But at that point, he didn't care because heaven looked so beautiful. Heaven looked so glorious. So it's like, you know, I don't care about what these people are doing on the earth and all that mess that they are doing. Let me go and see the father. You know, but Jesus was telling him, you have to go back because you have to do this and that. So he would not let him see. He kept, he kept blocking him from being able to see um, God because it was like, you have to go back. And if I let you, you are not going to go back, right? What I'm trying to paint, what I'm trying to explain essentially is that as long as you are approaching God, as long as you are speaking to the Father, you are doing it through Christ. Your whole life as a Christian, your experience is dependent on you being in Christ. And it is because this is so important that God goes through the extra step of not just placing you in Christ, which is a break proof, which is a shatter proof, a damage proof person for you to dwell in. He takes the extra step of sealing you by his spirit. Ephesians 4.30. Don't forget it. Keep, to, keep reading this verse to yourself. Keep reading this verse to yourself in the Passion Translation. The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence in your life. This is essentially what he's trying to do. This is essentially what he's trying to do. So many of us are fighting so hard. We are so upset at the seal. We are so upset that the seal is, for many of us, we are, we are crying, we're upset. Meanwhile, this seal is what protects you and ensures that you remain in Christ. Why? You are able to receive the full scope of your salvation experience here on earth as long as you are in Christ. It protects you from the antics of the enemy. This seal does so much for you. So that seal prevents that package from, you know, there are times when you are sending a package and maybe someone opens it. I don't know if I've ever experienced this thing where someone opened it and poured a little out of it. I've seen people on the internet, you know, come to share the experience that maybe they ordered food and the, I don't know, courier service in Lagos that was to deliver the food that the guy, oh, even Uber Eats. I'm telling you, I've seen it on the internet where people say that before their food got to them, when they got their food and opened it, they realized that someone had taken a bite out of their chicken. I'm laughing, but like, I'm trying to give a very real example of what this looks like for you so that you can make that connection to the way your life is right now. Hmm? So I've seen people complain that they bought food and the Uber driver ate part of it on the way. Well, maybe if they would have sealed this package, double, 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 multiple layers of sealing, maybe if they would have sealed it, maybe, okay? Maybe. We don't know the kind of, uh, you know, delivery people that are in existence. It's not even just in the US. Even in um, Nigeria, I've heard of people who order small shops. And then maybe the person to deliver, the career person will open it and take a few sprinkles or something, you know? These things happen. So that's what the Bible is telling us, that the, the, the guarantee that you have to travel safe without events, without, without incidents, without casualty is this Holy Spirit. Are you in Christ? Yes, you are. But this seal is what ensures your safe travel. And many of us now push against it. We then fight against it. Just like that customer that's sending long story email to my, my friend. Talking about don't use so much of sealing on the package. We fight that seal that is on our lives. Oh, it's too tight. Oh, it's too rigid. It's too this. Oh, we can't go to party. We can't go to the club. Why do you say we shouldn't do this? Oh, so we can't mix with that person. We can't go there. Why can't we marry anybody? A seal system is what the Holy Spirit represents for us. A seal system to ensure that we travel safe and without events. But we fight it so much. Why can't I go there? Oh, you know, is, is it a sin? Did the Bible say the, that's what we do? We fight that system so much, forgetting that that is the very system. That is the very characteristic. That is the very item. That is the very thing that ensures our preservation in Christ till that final day. So many of us sit here believing once saved, always saved. This is what the scripture is trying to tell you. Once saved is not always saved. Believe that. Once saved is not always saved. So if you didn't know that before today, at least you know that today. Once saved is not always saved. 
there's a scripture I was going to pull up, but I wrote down the verses wrong, so now I can't even trace it because I was going to share that to you to show you the example of people who the Bible records as their name being taken out of the book. So believe that once saved is not always saved. That is the reason why you need this double security system to ensure that you travel and journey and get to the final day intact. That is the reason why. So that seal is supposed to ensure that journey. It's supposed to ensure that you reach the intended destination in one piece. That's why it says do not grieve him and do not neglect his holy influence in your life. <laughs> Listen, I'm looking at this as someone is talking about how their friends were missing in their order. <laughs> I, I can't make these things up. Some of this is what our life looks like. The enemy is stealing fries out of our lives simply because we have refused to allow the Holy Spirit to be a seal on that package. I'm telling you, and I know we might be laughing, but my hope is that when you live here, you really understand what I'm talking about. That seal, yes, the seal can be tight and it needs to be that tight, Tabora. Because understand that the enemy is not looking for an underpopulated economy either. He's looking for people he can carry over there. He's looking for people he can package to that side. So why do you not think that the enemy wants to tamper with your life? That seal, yes, it can be too tight. It can, I'm telling you, like, listen, I could put it any other kind of way, but it's the truth. It is a tight seal. It is, it is tight in the way that my friend's package was sealed that caused that customer to send me. I say, don't seal it again. Don't seal it again. Just send me my conditioner. This is the, this is the reality. This is the reality. The Holy Spirit is a seal system for us. Because never forget that once saved, it's not always saved. You can travel, in, you can stand in front of the altar and give your life to Christ and say, I accept Jesus Christ and our Lord and Savior, only for you to find yourself on another path of life. That does not indicate that Jesus Christ is your Savior, much less your Lord. Much less your Lord. So I want to just, you know, just try to bring this message to a close. But I'm, you know, I want to be very very serious about this because when the Holy Spirit spoke to me about this, it really, really struck something within me. That seal is supposed to ensure that you travel and get there in one piece. But not only that, that, you know, you get there without too many incidents. Many of us reject that seal. Many of us fight against it. In fact, many of us will tamper with it. We'll loosen it just a little bit. And our life reflects it. I'm, I'm being serious right now. That's what I was saying earlier that many of us, our life looks like that Uber pizza order that the driver stole fries from. Instead of you to get to the final point, whole and perfect, the enemy is stealing fries out of our lives when we don't allow this seal to do its job. And our lives reflect it. So that we go through many needless problems, many things that we shouldn't have to deal with simply because the seal system has been messed with. And so any small gallop on the way you are falling apart, any small gallop on the way something has failed, any small gallop along the way something has broken. And so over and over and over you keep needing intervention. I want to pray right now to God that he's going to plant this word in your heart so that you really understand it. Because I know I'm trying to just like, you know, kind of just talk through it, but I mean this with every iota of seriousness that I have. That the spirit of God within you is a fail-proof system that God makes available for you to ensure that you journey in this life safe and that you get to the final point intact. No spills, no breaks, no damage, no dents. That is why God goes through so much effort. He puts the spirit within us. He puts the spirit upon us. He gives us the gifts of the spirit. He goes through so much to ensure that as far as the economy that's available in the spirit is concerned, you lack none of it. So that in every way you can journey without incident, you can journey without damage, you can journey without pain. Too many needless pains we have in our life is simply because we have pushed that seal out of its place. And I pray that God will bring a repentance to our hearts even as we finish up this message shortly to begin to review our lives. Because here's what happens when we struggle with that seal. Two things. Some people don't even make it to the final destination. That's just the truth. Putting it as candidly as possible, some people don't make it to the final destination. 
So some people, you've seen that situation where, let me tell you, like this literally has happened before, where you place an order and maybe you put it in an envelope and somehow maybe that envelope gets open um, mid-journey. And so by the time the envelope gets to the final destination, it's actually empty. It's actually empty. So for some people, the, the, the impact of their pushing back on that sealing work of the spirit is that if nothing is done, if care is not taken, they put themselves at the risk of ending up at their final destination with an empty package. It's an empty package. Christ is still there, but we can't find you in him anymore. Why? Because the sale was taken off. And so somewhere along the line, when there were some bumps on the road, when there were some, you know, I don't know, gallops around the way, potholes along the way, that you just rolled out. You just rolled out of Christ. Because remember, once saved, it's not always saved. It is a very real possibility to have started the journey in Christ only to not end the journey in Christ. It is very possible. You've rolled out of the container. You've rolled out of the box. The box gets to the final destination empty. The the sticker is still on the box, everything. But someone has messed with the seal. It came off and the item is not even in there. So Christ will still be there on the final day. But can we still find you in Christ? That's that's the question you, you answer. The guarantee that we still find you in Christ on that final day is that you let the seal do its job. You let the seal do what it was put in place to do. The second category of people are people who eventually get there. They make it to the final day of salvation, but they are so banged up, they are so dented, whew, with they carry all the evidence and the markings of a rough journey. And so the buyer has to wonder, is this what I ordered? Is this what I ordered? So you placed an, an order for this item, only for it to get to you, it looks like it has been rolled in the sand. They've pressed it on one side. Another place is, is twisted. Another, the package gets you. But with so many problems, one side has dented in. Another side melted a little bit. This other place, there's sand on it. It's just looking so rough. It's just looking so rough that the, the person who placed that order and put that seal on you has to wonder, is this indeed what I ordered? Because there's a version of your life that God has based on his assurance that you will allow the Holy Spirit to take you through your life's journey. Based on the assurance that you will yield yourself to this seal. And so this is what this package ought to look like when it gets to me on the final day. But many of us fight that seal, losing that, the grip of that seal, push back on it, rebel literally against the seal. And only to end up there, that's, you know, when we do, which, you know, thank God at least we get there. So you get there on the final day. Yes, you, have, you, are, you got there. You are still a valid purchase. But there's all the evidence and markings of a rough journey in your life. Do you know what that looks like? Now, there's a perfect ex perfect example I want to sh share with you. So um, kind of paint this picture. Even as I begin to bring this message to a close, I hope this is the last thing I want to say. But you see what, what happens here is this, is that if you read the story of um, the rich man and Lazarus, in Luke 16, from verse 19 to 31, that's what's happening here. I don't want to read it because it's too long and we have only a few minutes left. But you know what? Let's do it. Okay. It says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which laid at the gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Take note of that. And um, the rich man also died and was buried. There are two distinct experiences being described. You actually, we don't have to read it all the way to 31. I think just reading it up to verse 22 is fine. And then we all know what really happened, right? Like Lazarus was in heaven in Abraham's bosom and then the um, rich man was in hell and crying and asking if, if Lazarus could um, bring him some water. What I want to explain is this, that the two categories that I described above, they are fully represented in the rich man and in Lazarus. Luke 19 and 22. And so the Bible records that when Lazarus died, the angels came and picked him up. They picked him up and took him um, to Abraham's bosom. 
this is the description of people in category number two. You arrive there safely, but you arrive there extremely banged up, extremely dented, extremely soiled, extremely messed with. This is what it looks like when a person does not allow the Holy Spirit to do the full scope of his work in them. Because there's nothing that says that Lazarus had to live the way that he did. But what I'm trying to explain to us is that many of the the things we miss out on in our lives because we have not leveraged the full potential, the full capacities, capabilities of this seal. We have not leveraged what it's there for. Because the Holy Spirit is there in us to ensure that our journey here on earth is a good one and that we get there safe. So the Holy Spirit is your source of wisdom. He's your source of protection. He's your source of revelation. There is so much he is for you, but how many of us engage him? How many of us utilize what he brings? Barely a handful, many times, when we gather maybe a bunch of people. So we're like, oh, we're giving our lives to Christ, but how many of us truly have that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, developed through prayer, fellowship, studying the word? How many of us truly have that? The result of that is that you get there, kind of like Lazarus, arriving at the final point, but after having been through so much that was unnecessary, after having been through so much that you didn't have to, nothing says that Lazarus had to suffer that much. Nothing says, it's, it's, that's why it's a parable. Nothing says Lazarus' life had to look that way. So the question is, does your life have to look the way it looks currently? One crisis to another, one issue to another, one, you know, problem. To, does your life have to look that way? This is the question. And if the question is no, it doesn't have to look the way that it looks today. The, 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 the thing you have to now check is, am I fully utilizing this seal system of the Holy Spirit to ensure that my experience on earth here embodies what God intended when I was placed in Christ and that seal was put on my life? The second category, or basically the first one I described, is actually kind of like the rich man. In this case, you don't even get there. So you see they described the rich man. You said when he died, they buried him. They didn't, it just, I don't know whether it just picked him or it didn't pick him up. It's Lazarus, we know that they said angels came to pick up. So they came to pick up their package. It was intact. But the rich man, I don't know who picked him. All we know is that the Bible says he got buried. The Bible did not say whether angels came and picked him up. They just said he was buried. If you're following me, please, I want to just get feedback on Teams, on YouTube. I want to know that you are following this message. I just want to know that you're here. We need to be sure, we need to make sure that however we live our lives, we do not fall in one of these two categories. The category of people who eventually get there, but after much struggle and pain and turmoil and disaster and crisis and tears and all kinds of things that we did not have to have to deal with while on earth or the second category which is the one that does not even get to you that somewhere along the journey you rolled out of the box and then the box gets there fine but they can't account for the package this is something i want us to live with today because indeed the choices we have made the choices many of us have made and we continue to make on a daily basis puts us in one of these two categories except we do a proper self-examination because there's a third category there's a third category that gets there and gets there in original condition gets there and gets there in the right condition it is a very valid category and that is the category god placed us in and that God expects us to be in by sealing us in the spirit. So now we need to do that examination on our lives based on the choices we make, based on the choices we continue to make daily, every hour, every minute. What category have we put ourselves in? So you ask yourself these questions. What is the state of my seal? What is the state of my seal? Is it still there? Or have I thrown it out of the window completely? Some of us have. The Holy Spirit will beckon on us, will tell us what we need to do, how we need to behave, and we throw it away. Like, why do you have to tell me how to live? I can't do this. Do you understand? Some of us have taken that seal off. It's out. It's out the window. 
for some of us, we have just because, like Deborah was saying earlier, sometimes it's too tight. So I, I, let me just loosen it just a little bit. Let me just a little give. Is that little give that you make that provides the leverage, the foothold that the enemy is able to step into and ex- exert some level of damage, some level of of bumps, dents you know, discoloration, all kinds of things on our lives. So that's the question you ask yourself today, right? What is the state of my seal? Is it intact the way the Father has requested that it should be? Or have I even yanked it up and thrown it out completely? Or have I, for the sake of wanting to enjoy life, live my best life a little bit, have I then, I just loosened it just a little bit so that I can breathe. You find yourself in one of these three situations. And it is my prayer that every one of us here finds ourselves in the first situation, first condition, where the seal is still intact, the way the Father intended for it to be, so that you can appear before Him. It is literally, it bubbles in His heart, like counting down. It is His intention that on the final day He receives that package intact, the way He intended which is the reason for which you put that seal. So you make that choice. You can travel through life on this earth in a fragile state, perpetually prone to damage, constantly at risk. Or you can travel in a secured state where you have that seal that is so tight, like the way my friend put it on on her hair products, that ensures that you arrive at the final destination and that you arrive there in perfect condition. Let's not make that decision by our choices to travel through life as fragile goods, having no protection. Any slight turbulence, we are knocked over. Any slight, uh, 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 you know, bump in the road, you, you know, there's, a, there's a, uh, uh, a risk of you breaking. Let's make that decision today. There is a version of life that is fully available in Christ, but you need to leverage the Holy Spirit that the blood has put on your life as a seal to ensure that everything that you should enjoy everything that you should have access to everything that you should be able to take advantage of as a result of being a believer one who's giving their lives to christ that it is still there do not take the holy spirit's role in your life lightly because the holy spirit does not take his role in your life lightly Please hear me well. Do not take the Holy Spirit's role in your life lightly because he does not take it lightly. He knows he has a job, a clear job. He has one job and one job only to deliver you to your buyer in original and expected condition. And he will do everything he can to ensure that that's the case, but he cannot force himself on you. You get to make that choice and decide, you know what? This seal might feel tight. This thing might feel uncomfortable. This number of layers of... Do you understand that? You see, that example that my friend gave, that the person was complaining that in order to get to the item, they have to literally get a pair of scissors to cut through that that seal. This is what the Holy Spirit is doing for us. That we are so embedded in Christ and the Spirit of God wraps us and kisses us in and seals us so tightly that the enemy literally has to cut through the Spirit of God to access us. This is something so meticulously thought out by God that we don't take advantage of and then our journey looks different. We, we pay the price of our negligence. We pay the price of our carelessness. So the Holy Spirit does his best to wrap you in. But are you allowing that happen? So when he's putting these restrictions on your life, are you willing to say, you know what? It may not be convenient, but it's okay. Or are you offended? Is the Holy Spirit upsetting you? Is he the one making you upset today because he didn't let you go spend the night at that man's house? Because he didn't let you go sleep with someone for a promotion? Because he didn't let you engage in business practices that do not glorify him? All he's doing is he's trying to make sure that there is no slip, there is no gap in the system through which the enemy can buffet your life and cause you to arrive on the other side as damaged good or worse, that you don't even show up there. So think about these things today as we bring the message to a close. Our lives do not have to constantly be in shambles. God knows that, and that's why he put a system in place. It's not too late. If you live in a state right now that puts your journey at risk, if you live in a state right now that makes it highly questionable 
that you will get to the destination, to the buyer, or that you even get to the buyer in original state, you have a, a chance. You have an opportunity. You can stand before God today and say, Father, I repent. Father, I repent of the times that I grieved your spirit. I repent of the times that I grieved your spirit within me. It is not too late today to hand that package back and let that seal be put back on it. It's not too late. No matter what you have done, no matter how far you strayed, no matter where you have taken yourself, it is not too late to hand that package back to the one who knows how to deliver it safely. And so as I close, I want to read that scripture today because that is the key scripture I want us to take away with us. Ephesians 4.30 The Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. So never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence on your life. That is how he does his job of being a seal, by placing a holy influence on your life, by, by, by exerting his authority and influence over your life. It keeps you safe, it keeps the enemy out. This is my prayer today. So everyone, if we can come off mute, let us begin to take this prayer and say, Father, let your seal around me. Let it never shift. Help me to give myself to the system you've put in place. Help me to submit to the system of sealing that ensures that I arrive at your feet safely, that I arrive before you safely. Let us come off mute today. Let us come off mute right now. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray. Let us begin to express ourselves to God. If in any way we have tampered with our sin, oh, the Holy Spirit told you don't go there, but you decided that you want to go. The Holy Spirit told you don't say that, don't do this, but you decided that I must because why should I? If this is your situation today, hand that package My prayer that today Putting it back, putting it back together and placing it back on this journey called life so that it arises and finds its destination. Thank you. 
This is not the prayer we make as a conscious way of ending a teaching. We are making a real prayer, a real cry from our heart, asking you all, Holy Spirit, all, still up, 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 still up,
repent as a result of a problem with your sealing system the lord is restoring the lord is restoring the lord is restoring the lord is restoring maya katokoto mepane mana simba lagatalia sudaha lord as many as on this call today that need that healing let it begin even right now let that healing begin even right now let the angels of the lord begin to move begin to move among your people and heal trauma heal trauma heal trauma heal trauma heal trauma trauma emotional trauma emotional trauma emotional trauma all kinds of trauma father let it be healed psychological trauma every kind of trauma let it be healed every trauma let it be healed let the souls of many begin to experience a repair even from today even from today let the scabs fall off let the bruises be healed everything that had placed a form of damage a form of death a form of scabbing on the souls of your people let it be repaired let it be healed let it let it be taken off even right now in the name of jesus oh thank you father thank you lord i feel the anointing right now I feel the anointing right now. Father, anyone who's here laboring under the yoke that was brought upon their life as a result of this problem with the seal, Father, let that yoke be broken. By virtue of the anointing, let that yoke be broken. Whatever that yoke looks like, in whatever area of that life that yoke is functioning, let that yoke be broken from today, from today, from today, from this meeting. Let that yoke be broken in the name of Jesus and let your people be set free. Let them be released to step into their life and journey through this life with your system of protection in place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Whew. Hallelujah. Um, wow. Uh, wow. 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 Um, I honestly didn't even know that this message would go the way that it went at the end, but I truly feel that um, it was beyond the information that the Holy Spirit wanted to convey. It was more the oppression. He wanted to have the access to begin in many of us. It was the opening of our heart that would be achieved by hearing the message that would allow him that quick entrance, that quick opening to get right into our hearts, get right into our soul and begin to do a work of repair. I sense strongly that that was the very goal that was the very intent of the spirit of god for this meeting today and so i I ask that you know for everyone who is here that you begin to turn your heart more to him because he wants to begin this he wants to start to do this for you begin to turn your heart toward him let him begin to tell you what to do how to do it when to do it where and with who let him begin to do that for you and if you have people in your life that are suffering from one level of trauma or another listen i did not teach this message by effort i know deeply that this message was one that the holy spirit just through my vessel share this message with people in your life people are going through so much pain people are going through so much problems and it doesn't serve them any good when we allow them just pluck it when we allow them just 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 you know take care of those wounds by scrolling through instagram there is real healing there is real recovery there is real repair available in the spirit of god so I encourage you all to please take this message today. Take the link, send it to a loved one who is going through pains. Send it to a loved one who is going through life unguarded, going through life full of bumps and scrapes and batters. Send it to them and let the Spirit of God begin to do a new thing in their life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Please, if this message blessed you, you know, we always want to know. We always like to know that, okay? And I know we've gone past the time, but I thank you all for staying on. For those on youtube i think i i I should have told us on youtube that we were cutting off the um the uh the stream on youtube but um this is my prayer that those that were on youtube you know hopped back on here or at least can listen to the prayers after but thank you so much everyone for logging on god bless you um and i guess we'll see on thursday i believe that's the next time we're going to meet god bless you all